Hello, this is the first edition of the new show, Vermont Today, where we will be talking about issues of importance in Vermont today. My name is Terry Girolaman. My guest here is Ken Lawless. Uh, we both live in the city of Burlington. Uh, of course, we come up now with the question of support our troops. Well, I, I support our troops by asking for the immediate withdrawal of all of the soldiers from all around the world, bring them all back within the American borders. There's no need to have any American soldier outside of the American borders. Or if you are going to have uh, soldiers outside of the American borders, they should be under UN command. But I don't see any, any justification. I, uh, I'm happy that uh, Dennis Kucinich is running for president within the Democratic Party and proposing a Department of Peace. Uh, I was uh, uh, disappointed in the uh, uh, last debate at Howard University of the uh, candidates for the Democratic nomination that uh, Dennis uh, Kucinich um, would agree to uh, an intervention in Darfur. Now, we don't really know what's going on. Darfur. It may be a very aggrievous situation, but to go and invade another country in an, on another continent after the long history of uh, aggressive wars by America is, is really uh, off the wall. And I hope that Dennis will reconsider uh, supporting that. We need an end to all military involvement and take the money and put it into the schools and into uh, social security and into things which will benefit America. Now, during the Second World War, the, the, many of the cities in, uh, in Europe were bombed out. But it, if you go there now, they're, they're beautiful. They've all been rebuilt. But if you go through many American cities, they looked as if they were bombed out, but we never had a war here. But that's just because the money is not being put into in the infrastructure. Our bridges are collapsing. They're not being maintained. There is where the money should go, not to wars and killing people in foreign countries. We don't really know what's going on in foreign countries. The oligarchs that rule, they know, but their interests are not our interests. What do you think, Ken? Well, the war in Vietnam convinced me to be a nonviolent pacifist. I'd like to see all American troops brought back to the United States of America and let the people who live in a place solve their own problems and, and live their own lives and speak their own languages and celebrate their own cultures. The way to support our troops is to demand that they be brought home now, immediately. I, I disagree with the uh, concept that support for the troops should be general. Now, why do young men enlist in the army? They enlist now in the army because they need a college education. They, they don't have the money. So it's economic pressure that pushes people into the army. This is what a professional army is. If we had a citizen army, um, there wouldn't be this, uh, and, and they shouldn't be paid. Uh, there shouldn't be the, the financial incentive. Uh, in other countries, uh, young people have free education. In, in, in France, for instance, uh, college education up through medical school uh, is free. And in England, uh, the, every, every young person has a guaranteed uh, stipend if they want to go to college. Nobody is excluded because they're poor or because they don't have the money. And so there isn't the same incentive to feel that they have to go into the army. But are we supporting our troops? Would we support a young person that didn't have the money if they became a bank robber? Well, the, could, would the excuse be, uh, well, I didn't have the money, so I had to rob the bank? But is it really any different if they enlist in the army and go over to Iraq and murder and, and rape and innocent people, women, children, why is that different than as if they decide to rob a bank? I, I think we should re-examine the issue of when and how are we supporting our troops. What do you think, Ken? Well, 
I think, first of all, that our military establishment is so huge and they're not meeting their recruitment goals that they're recruiting in American middle schools. They're also recruiting in Latin America, mostly among the desperately poor, where they'll give a bonus when you enlist. I forget how much this is, but it's a lot, $2,000 or more. And then after you uh, complete your service in the military, you're given temporary residence here for like two years or something like this. And recently, the uh, Homeland Security, it used to be the Immigration and Naturalization Services, uh, they've been deporting the wives of troops that are killed or missing in Iraq because the promises that were made to the person who's actually serving in the military don't extend to their families so that you can actually die fighting for the United States in Iraq but if you aren't a citizen your wife will be deported from the United States though you've just died in a foreign war that was none of your business to begin with. You were desperately poor and you wanted to live in the United States and you were willing to risk your life. But after you've lost your life, they deport your wife. I mean, it's, it, it's quite frankly a shocking ingratitude. Quite apart from the uh, you know, precedent, it, it does suggest that the government has places too little value on human life, which many of us believe all life is sacred and uh, would like to see that respected by our government. Yes, well, we're running out of time now, and uh, I hope that uh, people have uh, learned something by our discussion, and um, we will have to continue with the next program. Um, you're welcome to send emails. Uh, uh, my uh, email address is uh, geraldman at alumni.neu.edu, as you can see printed at the bottom of the screen. Um, and we will see you with our next mission. Uh, thank you.